this is Brendan Watson from Watto Training and this is an introduction to assignment 17 which covers two uh, qualifications. The first one is TLI 41218, Certificate 4 in Transport and Logistics Road Transport Driving Instruction, which is for the car instructors, and TLI 41318, Certificate 4 in Transport and Logistics Road Transport Heavy Vehicle Driving Instruction. Um, the assi assignment title is Develop an a an on-road assessment route. Your task is to develop an on-road assessment route relevant to your training, your class of training you would deliver. So if you're a heavy combination instructor, you'll also be qualified to deliver HR, MR, LR. So you can pick, um, you can pick one of those classes to, to run the assignment on. I don't really mind whether it's LR or HC. Um, but either way, it's more about the ability to develop the assessment route. The on-road assessment route should include, as much as possible, a range of situations. See the guiding list below. Try to get at least 80% of them in your circuit if possible, as well as a variety of speed zones, 50, 60, 70 and 80 zones. You only need to list one street road situation for each specific situation in the assessment task, but aim to meet the following requirements to be in line with what a driver examiner would do when constructing a test circuit for transport main roads. So the, when the examiners put together an assessment route, they're looking at the following intersection. So roundabout, a minimum of two, combination turn, one, I've got a um, YouTube on combination turn, and staggered one, I've got a YouTube on that as well, you can have a look at that. T-sections, eight in total, um, minimum of two right turns and two left, crossroads 12, with right turns three and left turns two. The format of the circuit, you can submit the assessment circuit as listed street names with lefts and rights and straight aheads, or you can use a Google map, anything's fine, as long as we can follow it and it makes sense. If possible, cover the assessment route on your practical course. Yeah, this is, this is really good. So if, for example, you're doing a course, let's say on the north side of Brisbane, and you live in Castledine, the logical thing would be to do the assessment um, in Castledine because that way when we do your course, we can run this circuit. What I would firstly get you to do is run it as driver and do a show and tell. Just run us around the circuit and tell us how you've achieved what you've set out to do and then we'll get you to jump in the left seat and then guide, guide let's say me or anyone else around to drive as well. That, that gives you a really good idea of what it's like to construct an assessment route. Now, when we say assessment, this course is to make you a driver trainer, not a driving assessor. But all trainers are always assessing their students, even if it's informal assessment. They sometimes call it formative assessment um, to give feedback to the student on what they're doing well, what they need to improve on, and so on. It's also good too if you ever get questioned on what you're doing with a training. Uh, a training session you can you can have a bit of method behind it that you can share with people and say well we've done different speed zones today we've done some roundabouts left right straight ahead u-turn we've done a merge onto the freeway and so on test time the duration of the test must be considered when designing your test route so if you're a c-class trainer the window period will be 45 minutes but the actual on-road time would be, at, would be 25 to 35 minutes if you're uh, for example, a heavy rigid instructor, the, the actual window will be 90 minutes. The on-road test will go for 60 to 70 minutes. And down the bottom, HC, 90 minute win window period, and on-road time of 70 to 80 minutes. Keeping in mind that with a semi-trailer, you're gonna uncouple and recouple the trailer. So that takes a fair bit of time up. So as you go up through the classes, you can see um, the time periods that are allowed. And that window period, you know, allows for the examiner's got to walk out of the building, walk to the car, um, sometimes get out to the car and there might be some sort of minor defect with the vehicle that can be fixed quickly. So if it fits within that window period, then the examiner might say, yep, sure, change that bulb and then they can continue on. Also, the examiner might be out on a, a test and there might be some little minor delay somewhere with a vehicle breakdown or something. So it gives takes a bit of pressure off the examiner and the, the student on the test as well. Minimum drive time. Unless the test is terminated for any reason, the minimum drive time is 25 minutes. It applies to classes C, R, E, R, and L, R tests. In urban centres, applicants should expect an on-road assessment period around 30 minutes. 
Um, that, that would be, yeah, for those uh, classes mentioned. Uncontrollable and unpredictable events such as roadworks, traffic accidents may affect your duration of the test. If possible, start in the assessment at your nearest transport main roads. We've covered that. But if that doesn't suit your circumstances, please select an alternative location, e.g. a depot that suits you. So we find sometimes in the heavy vehicles, uh, bus drivers and truck drivers, they might be a fleet trainer. They may start their assessment from the depot. Now, when you put your circuit together, this is really what we want to, when we talk about the 80%, try and get 80% of the following. Lane driving, a lane change a one-way street, a marked lane, an unmarked lane, a wide road, a narrow road, find a curve and or a bend, a high-speed merge, a low-speed merge, find some intersections, roundabout, combination turn, a staggered, a one-way street, uncontrolled intersection, controlled, um, e.g. stop sign, stop line, controlled with a give way, directional markers painted on the road or on signage, multi-lane roads, edge lines, crossroads, and T-sections as well. Try and find a high speed zone, you know, minimum of 80. I think some areas down the Gold Coast might only even get up to 70. Um, maybe Southport, I think, for example. A low speed zone as well. A higher tra traffic density situation and a lower traffic density situation. Crossings, pedestrian crossing, children's crossing, level crossing. Obviously there's um, some areas where there's, where there's no train lines, so that would be irrelevant for those areas. Maneuvers, a minimum number of maneuvers required is two. Please select two two maneuvers, um, there must be at least one maneuver with a reversing component in it. So the maneuvers to choose from, you've got the U-turn, but that is only relevant to class C. He'll start all classes, turnaround maneuver, which is the old three point turn, C class, reverse park, C class, straight line reverse, all classes, gear changing exercise, auto car, auto heavy vehicle, reverse around a corner, LR, MR, HR, and uncouple, recouple, HC. I go into more detail about the QSAFE uh, driving assessment in other tutorials, so I won't elaborate on those. And also I go into a lot more detail about the maneuvers. Tips for designing an on-road assessment, drive, assessment, route difficulty. The following points in relation to assessment route typically must be considered. When designing assessment routes, avoid including driving situations that are known to be particularly problematic or hazardous. When selecting assessment routes, situations where applicants are directed into an area with different traffic restrictions should be avoided. For example, altered speed limit, which are not signed at that particular point. Try and avoid exposing applicants to the more difficult specific driving situations at the beginning of a test so that the applicant has time to settle into the assessment. For example, it would be preferable not to direct the applicant onto the freeway at the beginning of the test. If you think about it somewhere like Maryborough, the transport department's right next to the freeway um, there. So if an examiner went straight out there, that would be an example of it being quite intense. However, knowing that it's a, it's a regional town, quite a small town, the local trainers are, um, train their students to be able to merge there. And um, I notice when I go and train in areas like that, that that's a really specific situation. Safety on the assessment route. It is essential that the design of all assessment routes takes into consideration the safety of the assessor. So self-preservation, the applicant and other road users. Remember to apply risk management approach. See FAQ for more on risk management. I'll make sure I put some more details about risk management up on my YouTube channel ASAP. Okay, that gets us back to the beginning. Um, this has been Brendan Watson. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the field below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider becoming a subscriber to the Watto Training YouTube page. Thank you and see you out on the road.